Hi everyone, firstly I would like to thank the organizers of 2021 IEEE Symposium on Computer Applications and Industrial Electronics for giving us the opportunity to show our work and getting it reviewed by experts in the field. I'm here to present our paper titled An Automated System for Recognizing Isolated Handwritten Bangla Characters Using Deep Convolutional Neural Network. This paper has been written by the authors Mohammad Nahid Hassan, Rafi Ibn Sultan, and I, Mohammad Kasadullah. All three of us are currently working as lecturers in the Department of CSE of Bangladesh University, Rajshahi, Bangladesh. Now that I have introduced myself, without further ado, let us move on to the presentation. Here is the list of contents that will be discussed in this presentation. Among various handwritten character recognition of different languages, Bangla stands as one of the most challenging tasks. Because of its unique texture and morphologically complex structure, often classification models do not provide the expected result as one hopes to have. In this research, a deep novel, Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN for short, of 11 layers is proposed. Among the layers, six are convolutional layers. This deep CNN model was trained to classify Bangla basic isolated characters of 50 classes, each representing a character. The research utilized a publicly available dataset, CMATE RDB 3.1.2, for its classification purpose. The model performed relatively better than the current research on this field and wielded a 98.03% accuracy on the test dataset. This improvement leads us to believe that more accurate results can be achieved in the future by working with other such kinds of datasets or by tweaking the existing model. Character recognition is the process of associating a symbolic identity to the image of a character. This recognition can be distinguished into two categories. One of them is the characters from printed text and the other one is the hand characters written by people. Recently, handwritten character recognition has gradually become one of the most prolific computer vision thesis topics among researchers worldwide. Although there have been many works done on major languages such as English and other popular languages, the success rate in recognizing Bangla handwritten characters is still not up to the mark. It is mostly due to the unique characteristics such as strokes, styles and structure of the characters varying widely among each language. Especially handwritten character recognition or HCR for short is more difficult compared to printed forms of characters. Furthermore, different people's characters are unique to each person and vary in different aspects such as size, shape and style. In the case of Bangla HCR, the complexity increases tenfold than in some specific languages, mostly because of the morphologically complex nature of Bangla characters. Bangla contains many similar shaped characters that can look the same to even some human eyes if they are new to the language. In many cases, one character differs from another with a single dot or mark. Numerous variations of Bangla language users' writing style can be observed and the nature of various sets of characters can often be quite similar. This scenario has dramatically influenced the research and development of automated systems that try to recognize handwritten characters. There are a total of 50 characters in the Bangla alphabet that are depicted in the following slide. Recognition of handwritten characters involves two significant steps, extracting features from the character set and then employing classification or learning tools to classify individual characters. In any visual recognition task, the main challenge is feature extraction from the images. The more a model can overcome this challenge, the better the model performs, or in other words, can classify more accurately. Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN, is the first ever algorithm to perform well on digit recognition tasks, and it has been used in this field ever since. CNN has been performing well in such image recognition challenges, mostly because of its insensitiveness to translation variance and scale variance of the features that are extracted from the images. In this paper, Bangla handwritten character recognition is investigated based on a deep convolutional neural network, or DCNN, as the image classifier. The proposed DCNN model works around to recognize 50 basic isolated Bangla handwritten characters as accurately as possible. Here, by isolated, I mean a single image will have only one character. The aforementioned 50 characters are depicted here with the symbolic representation denoting the class names of every character. The basic phases of our proposed method for Bangla handwritten character recognition are shown here. The steps are sequentially data collection and pre-processing, data set generation, training, classification using CNN, optimization, and testing. In this work, we use the public data set CMATE RDB 3.1. Point point two, which was created by the Center for Microprocessor Applications for Training, Education and Research, a research laboratory of Jadavpur University in Kolkata. This dataset contains 50 different Bangla isolated handwritten characters. Among the 50 basic characters, there are 39 constants and 11 vowels. The dataset consists of a train folder and a test folder denoting the training and testing datasets. Both of these folders have 50 subfolders mapping the 50 different characters. Each folder maps to a particular character. Both in the training and testing subfolders, each contains an equal number of sample images, 240 and 50 images respectively. This balancing ensures that the class imbalance problem will not occur for the model when training. Counting all the samples of the dataset in total, there are 2,000 and 3,000 images respectively for the training and testing dataset. 
After converting the dataset images to grayscale images, we recreated the matrix of the images. To reduce the computational cost, we converted the pixel values to a value between 0 and 1 by dividing each value by the maximum of 255. We separated the row and the column to make many one-dimensional arrays of images. Each row of images contained a classifier number by which we could identify each character. From the data set, there were four arrays created in the first place. The first two arrays, X-Train and Y-Train, were prepared for training the machine, and another two arrays, X-Test and Y-Test, were made for testing. The training data set was further split into two groups, training and validation set. From the original training data set, 10% of the set of images was selected to create the validation data set, XVAL and YVAL, which was used to validate while training the model. The testing data set of 3,000 images was reserved for the final evaluation of the proposed model. Using separate validation and test data set, it had been made sure that no intentional bias would be imposed in the final tuned model's earned accuracy. To see the data set's distribution, randomly 1,000 image labels were selected and are illustrated here. The labels of the images are put in the y-axis where each number denotes their corresponding class that they belong to. The numerical numbers denote the alphabets classes chronically. The dataset contains handwritten characters that were collected from a wide range of people of different ages and sex. Therefore, it ensures that a variety of numerous forms are available for every character. Sample images of constants from the dataset and sample images of the vowels from the dataset are shown here. Before feeding the images into the model, some pre-processing was done to extract features from them relatively easily. At first, the raw images were converted into grayscale images. In a grayscale image, each pixel value is a single integer number ranging from 0 to 255, representing a pixel's brightness. Generally, 0 represents a black pixel and 255 represents a white pixel. As the sizes of the collected images of the characters were different in the first place, all of them were resized into a 28 by 28 dimension to maintain an appropriate and equal input shape. The figure here shows some resized grayscale images of character core that were used as the input of convolutional neural network. As discussed earlier, this paper implements a novel deep CNN-based model for the classification task. CNN works remarkably well in any computer vision classification task, making it one of the primary reasons for being used very frequently in such tasks. CNN is a famous deep learning architecture that can learn features from input images without much pre-processing. Typically, a CNN architecture consists of multiple nonlinear transformations in various stages, followed by a supervisor classifier, which has the classifying responsibility. Sample images are fed into a CNN model, and the model is trained by learning features of these images. The final output layer matches the images with the provided labels of those images. CNN works so successfully because of the concept of backpropagation. In the forward pass, the gradient generated from the mismatched errors after predicting the image labels is fed back from the output label. The parameters in different layers of the model are tuned with respect to the gradients generated in a way that errors are minimized. The model repeats this process a considerable number of times until it reaches a saturation point where the model's final accuracy can be determined. The CNN model that was designed is depicted in this figure. The model has six convolutional layers where a max pooling layer is used after two consecutive convolutional layers. There is a fully connected layer before the final output layer generating the output scores. I will discuss each layer of the proposed CNN model now. The first layer, convolutional layer one, is input data, or in other words, training images of shape 28 by 28 by one. Here, one identifies that the images are of grayscale. They are fed through this layer. A total of 64 filters of three by three size are used to convolute the images for extracting features from the provided images. The re-LU activation function is used in this layer for introducing the nonlinear properties to this network. The activation function is responsible for converting the input signal of each node of the layer to an outgoing output signal for the next layer. This activation function is appropriate for the model because of its enormous success in real life practice of similar cases, as it is faster and more efficient than other similar types of activation functions. The output results shape of the first convolutional layer is 28 by 28 by 64. Here 64 identifies that the images are convoluted with 64 filters. Since this layer uses the same pairing technique, the height and weight of the output shape images remain intact. For initializing the weights, the Xavier initialization method is used. This initializer makes sure that the weights are appropriate and kept in a reasonable range of values through different layers while initializing. In the second layer, convolutional layer 2, the second convolutional layer has the same setup as the first convolutional with the same number of shape of the filters, the same activation function, and the same initializer. In the third layer, which is called max pooling layer 1, the outputs generated by the last layer's re-LU are now passed into the max pooling layer of uh, size 2 by 2. This layer is used mainly to help overcome overfitting while training the model. Such pooling layers commonly occur after two consecutive convolutional layers. This layer reduces the shape to exactly half. A dropout of the score, 0 0.5, is also applied to the output of the layer, which also operates to overcome the model's overfitting. In the next layer, convolutional layer 3, 
uh, this layer has the same setup as before, except it uses 128 filters of size 3 by 3. This layer converts the current size to 14 by 14 by 128 and passes it to the next convolutional layer. In the next layer, which is called convolutional layer 4, just as before, this convolutional layer has the same setup as the previous convolutional layer before it. In the next layer, which is called max pooling layer 2, the max pooling layer uses the same configuration and the same dropout technique as the first max pooling. This operation again reduces the shape to exactly half, which is 7 by 7 by 128. In the next stage, uh, convolutional layer 5, like other convolutional layers, this layer also follows the same setup, except it again increases its filter numbers to 256, which of uh, size 3 by 3. The current shape is converted into a 7 by 7 by 256 shape. Convolutional layer 6 is the next layer. This layer is a carbon copy of the convolutional layer preceding this. In the next layer, which is called max pooling layer 3, following the previous two max pooling layers' footsteps, this does the same thing by reducing the current shape to exactly half, which is 3 by 3 by 256. In the 10th layer, it is called the fully connected layer. After the last pooling operation, the results are flattened and fit to this fully connected layer of 128 neurons. In the next layer, which is called the output layer, it is the final layer and the softmax activation unit is applied to every node in this layer. Every node will generate a probability value assigned to the 50 output nodes, which will determine the image label. The highest probability score from the nodes will then be classified as the corresponding level of that image. For measuring this classification model's performance, cross-entropy loss between the labels and predictions was applied. For initializing the weights, Xavier initialization method was used for providing appropriate weight values. This method made sure that the neurons in the layers didn't start training in saturation. The model was trained using mini batches of size 32. We also implemented the reduce LR on plateau class, which can reduce the learning rate when the validation loss is not improving. In this model, the learning rate was decayed after every consecutive three epochs where there were no improvements. We used a total of 100 epochs to train the model. The total learnable parameters of the model are 1,445,000. 746. Summary of the layers of the proposed model can be seen here. The CNN model was trained on an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and a system RAM of 8 gigabytes. It implemented the Keras API on top of TensorFlow, uh, which uses CUDA Toolkit 10.1.243, QDNN uh, version 7.6.5, and Python 3.6.12. The Training accuracy and validation accuracy for increasing epoch numbers are depicted in this figure. This figure illustrates another performance measurement of the model by plotting the training loss and validation loss concerning epochs. This figure delineates the confusion matrix of the proposed CNN model in further performance analysis of the model. The confusion matrix is a 50 by 50 matrix where the predicted labels and true labels of the output classes are mapped from the test data samples. As each output class had exactly 60 images for the testing purpose, the matrix was evaluated on this fact. From the confusion matrix, we can see that NAW was mislabeled the most. From the 60 test samples belonging to NAW, the model correctly labeled 56 images as NAW, while four images were labeled as Murdhana and GO, respectively. The main reason behind this error can be the structural similarities between these three characters. The final training validation accuracy of the model after completing training is 98.74% and 97.75%. The model is then evaluated on the test data set, which resulted in a 98.03 test accuracy. Summarizing the confusion matrix, it holds a result of 0.98 in precision and 0.98 in recall and an overall F1 score of 0.98. A summary of accuracy in comparison to other related works in Bangla HCR is depicted here. Considering our proposed model's accuracy compared to the accuracy obtained by the other models described in related work, we can conclude that the proposed model performs better than previously envisioned techniques. This approach could result in advancement in the pursuit of digitization of all Bangla texts and literature. Our model only recognizes characters at the moment. It does not have full text recognition capabilities yet. However, its performance might suggest that further modifications to this model might enlighten how to create a complete Bangla handwritten text recognition system. In the future, we also have plans to explore different neural network models and work with various data sets to create a more robust and effective automated system. These are the references mentioned in this presentation. In conclusion, I'd like to thank everyone who have been listening for such a long time. Since this is not a live session, I will not be able to answer your questions directly. However, we will be receiving questions in the comments section of this video. So you're welcome to ask any questions you may have there. We'll try our best to answer those as soon as possible. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day.